<laughs> Hello. Hello, my dear. Oh my god. <laughs> oh wow. So lovely to meet you. <laughs> same, same and you oh my god. You know what I can say, you look wonderful. Oh, thank with the you. Sweaters. <laughs> it's all brought to you by you. <laughs> You are amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we we haven't formally met and I hit record because this account will just turn off in 40 minutes. <laughs> so I was just like, I'm going to press record right away. <laughs> but I am Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin is off arranging flowers right now. That is her new passion. And so she put it she couldn't join us. So, I have something for her, so <laughs> yeah, I put some flowers <laughs> inspired by her. <laughs> yes. So I, I have to get this right away. Paula, is it Paula Pereira? Is that how, yeah. how do you say it? Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> is Portuguese your first language? Yes, it is. It's Portuguese. Um, I know the Pereira is a little bit difficult, <laughs> but it's perfectly, it's, it's correct. <laughs> so, and I have to ask, do you read poetry? Um, sometimes, sometimes, you know, um, lately I must confess that I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not reading nothing, all of the news. <laughs> But, you know, I, I like some, some poets, um, but it's not my first call for reading. Sure. sure. I only ask because there's um, Portuguese poets who I love, and I've even been known to call up friends who speak Portuguese and say, will you read this to me in Portuguese? <laughs> <laughs> oh, because of the, the sound of the language? Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is yeah, um, so Pozoa and DeAndre, I don't know, like those are the two that I'm thinking of, but I will spare you. I won't put you on the spot. <laughs> I will be more than happy to read in Portuguese for you anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll arrange that for our next visit. Yeah, this, uh, I would be more than happy to do this. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, let's see, and my one word is obrigado. Yeah, obrigado, it's our thank you. Oh, it's thank and, you. okay. Yeah, it's our thank you. And there's one word that I like to share with you that for me is really beautiful, and it's a word that only exists in Portuguese, mm. which is saudade. Saudade oh. is when you miss you know, something or a person, but you know, when it's not about suffering, it's not about, you know, being sad because you're missing this person. When we say saudade, it's like inspiring. It's like, it's, I feel so good when I remember, you know, things that we have together or when I think about you. So saudade for me, it's such a beautiful word. And there's a lot of Brazilian music where we will find this word saudade. <laughs> I love it. That's, that is beautiful. Sort of like, I'm sure all of us knitters were feeling that way about our festivals. Exactly. So this would be a wonderful, you know, example for saudade. Yes. Uh, and I think this word is so beautiful. I, I mean, I like the word and I like the, the way that I feel when I think about saudade. <laughs> yes. And are you... Where are you, you're in Brazil? Yes, I'm in Brazil. So now I'm living in Sao Paulo. So I was born in Rio de Janeiro, mm -hmm. a beautiful city. And I'm living in Sao Paulo, you know, since 2014, I guess. But, you know, I'm enjoying this, this city so much. You know, everything happens here. There's a lot of culture. So I'm pretty happy here too. <laughs> I, I I cannot believe the way knitting works that you and I are talking <laughs> and you're in Brazil and I'm in Wisconsin, which I'm sure you've never heard of. It's like some Western state. It's by all the lakes, the Great Lakes. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. This is fantastic. And I think last year, one of the most amazing things that we have, it was like, um, you know, um, like, I I'm missing the word in English, but we, of course, we always communicate with internet, with Instagram and all this stuff. But I think last year we had this opportunity to have lots of festivals and meetings and people gathering together over internet. And I think this is amazing mm -hmm. because this is an, uh, an amazing opportunity, you know, to be in touch, you know, to know people that have a passion in common. Mm -hmm. And from that, we can build lots of bridges and share good things. So I think this is really precious. <laughs> it is definitely the, the gift that came out of, of this global pandemic. And I think the, the idea of thinking more globally, period, you know, the interconnected sense. Exactly. So definitely, I'm glad that you brought this because, you know, I feel that we are connected, but I think this disease shows us that we are connect, mm -hmm. period. <laughs> so yeah, I think will take us, you know, a lot of time to figure it out, but I think the seed is there, the, you know, the foundation. So we must be aware of that mm -hmm. in so many senses, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whether we, you know, whether we want to think about it or not, it is the underlying fact of our existence. And, and then I just need to say one more time back to poetry. I think that's another way. I love bilingual editions. I, I only, I took French in high school, but I'm Me not. Too. But Me I too. still speak English. <laughs> but I always get bilingual editions. And I just go ahead and read poems, like I'll read French poems and German poems and I'll just slaughter it, but I want to hear the sound at least of another language, you know, and, and then I'll go ahead and try to read it. But I don't know, there's something about that for me that just, I don't know, that makes me feel very much part of the human family too, that I can appreciate the sound, whether or not I understand a word of it. <laughs> I love that. This is beautiful what you said. Yeah, I think this is a, a way to feel included and that we are part of it. So it's beautiful, beautiful what you said. Yes. Well, it came in and then I'm going to get to talking about knitting, but I have to say this sweater <laughs> back here. <laughs> I think I told you the whole time I was knitting it, my son was he was on the Pacific coast of Mexico and he tested positive. He didn't have symptoms, but he couldn't get on the plane. Yes. The blessing was is that he's fluent in Spanish. So I don't, so it wasn't like he was, I don't know. He just, he was able to, you know, just isolate himself. But once he got a negative test, he, he I don't know, I feel like he felt he felt so grateful to be able to speak Spanish. And I think one of the things coming home that he felt the proudest of was like along the way in his travels, he'd run into people and he would help them or they would help him. And it, they, you know, he bonded over knowing another language. And, and I don't know, I feel, I feel really glad that he has that. I wish I did, but I doubt I don't know. I doubt I'm going to learn. <laughs> I mean, I'm turning 50. It might be a little late for me. But what about you? You you took French, you speak English, you speak Portuguese. Yeah, and well, you know, well, first of all, he's at home. He's okay now. Yes, he's fine. He's home. He's so, good. He's got a, and he's now reading Neruda. That's what. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we send a Brazilian hug. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was hard. It was hard just worrying, but he's okay. And, yeah. and, and, but the thing that you're really worried about is you don't want him to give it to other people either. I mean, exactly. He was vaccinated, but you know, I guess that's how it works. You can get a little breakthrough illness. It's it, it's, I think it's all, always scary because, you know, we don't know. I, I'm very grateful that we have the vaccines 
So it's a way to protect us to not have this disease very strong. But yeah, you know, I, I understand him. I'm with him. About <laughs> 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 well, the languages, um, I speak Portuguese. Uh, and I start to learn English in a very funny way, but I feel this urge to communicate even before meeting. And, you know, I had French classes mm -hmm. uh, because public schools here in Brazil, when I was a student, we, we didn't have English, we have French. Oh, but I understand a little bit, but I, you know, I can't talk. <laughs> but, you know, I'm glad that I, took this English classes when I was, you know, an adult, uh, older. Oh, did? Because, oh. Yeah, because I think, it, it, you know, this opened up a whole new world for me. So this is exactly what you said. So we are able to communicate. It doesn't matter where you are, we can communicate. And I love that. <laughs> I must say that I love that. So sometimes, you know, maybe I'm not speaking with the right accent or you know, the correct uh, verbal form. But, you know, I think the most important is try to connect. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the, the richness, you know, the best, that, you know, one of the best things that we have like human beings mm -hmm. is, you know, being willing to share, to talk, to communicate. So I agree with you. <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, and what brought you and I together? And then I'll start talking about you and not about me. I'm so sorry. I'm taking this toward you. You're the destination. But I'm obsessed with linen quill from Pearl Soho. I have so much linen quill. We are, we, we are making these half and half triangle wraps. Let me grab. It's gorgeous. I almost start one. <laughs> yeah. And this is gorgeous. And then... I have, I have just so much linen quill, and I know that some of the people who watch our podcast have a lot of linen quill. I'm there. There's one of them, right? And so, and then I saw your sweater come up on the website, and it was just perfect. It's such a perfect design. I'm just going to stand for a second, you know, but just for the other people. So it's this little cropped just glorious v-neck sweater and I thought it was so elegant it was such a perfect match of the pattern and the yarn it just knocked my socks off and then <laughs> and then it was like a light bulb went on and you are everywhere like and if you don't mind I'm just <laughs> like here here, I mean, these are just st stuff sitting next to my bed, you know, and I just was like, I'm just going to open them and look around. So there you are. This is one we've always wanted to knit. And here you are in making. Here's one we've always wanted to knit. Here you are. <laughs> you are in 52 weeks of shawls. Not one, but two designs. Here's another one. And it was funny because... <laughs> And, and then we had been given some daylights to share a long time ago and we showed it and then I fell in love with it and I bought a sweater quantity to make this sweater. Is it the, how do you pronounce it? Louise. Louise, okay. So the Louise sweater, but then the Nutidin came into my life and I just felt like it was a perfect substitute. So that was my, and, and then it was just, your name was popping up everywhere. And I had no idea you were so <laughs> prolific. So can we, can we, this is how I found you. <laughs> can we back up and just talk about your like making and then your transition into designing and just, I'm going to turn it over to you to, for you to kind of tell your fiber story. I love that. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I started to knitting about 11 years ago. So I used to work on a company, you know, 
you know the drill, like 14 hours a day, 12 hours a day, all the stress, so no time to go to my, my child's school, all the stuff. And then I decided to quit. I was really in, in a very bad shape, emotional bad shape anyway. And then I decide, you know, that will make, you know, something different from my life. I save some money. Then I decide to be a yoga instructor because I have been practicing oh. since I was a teenager. So I moved to Vancouver, Canada. No. You know, to do the training. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turns out that, you know, when I was going to my classes, there was this beautiful, gorgeous knitting store, Urban Yarns. Mm -hmm. So I always looked to the windows and I said, oh my God, everything is so beautiful. You know, the beautiful, you know, I looked to the store like if I, I was looking for a painting, you know, or a sculpture, something like that. This is the kind of feeling that I had. So one day I find courage and, you know, I just, get in and all those yarns and you know the atmosphere we know that we're still feeling this doesn't matter you know if it's the first time or you know if if it is our local yarn store every time that we go we feel this mm -hmm. and then you know I went home and I asked you know the the owner of the place that I was she you know she was uh, an English a British lady and she taught me how to knit and pro and then, you know, I start to do the classic, like need a, a scarf, you know, in garter, <laughs> something mm -hmm. like that. And then, I don't know, a few weeks after that, I decide to, you know, apply, uh, not apply, I decide to, you know, participate on a, on a workshop. And then I just choose a workshop. There was a scarf in mohair and beads. <laughs> I will oh. never forget this. <laughs> How much I, I was so nervous, but you know I'm I was very fortunate because my first teacher, my first knitting teacher was Sylvia Harding, mm. and you know for me she is an extraordinary designer and you know the most amazing human being. So she taught me not only to knit, she taught me how to undo my need, to understand my, my mistakes. And most of all, you know, she opened something for me, you know, her love, her devotion to knitting definitely, you know, leaves something inside of me that was really precious. So uh, I stay in Canada for about one year, one year and a half. So then when I come back to Brazil, I was ready to, you know, teach yoga. But, you know, knitting it was like a hobby, something that I, I was excited about it. And then, you know, I start to teach and, you know, knitting and feeling something. I, I don't know how to describe it. It was very pleasant. It's not magical. It was very pleasant. Something about, you know, the mechanics, the, the mathematic, you know, the, the 3D way to think. So I was very excited about that. Do you and mean then, that it unlocked like an intelligence that you had a way of being that you maybe didn't even know until exactly. you exactly thank you for that jackie i think it was something like that you know i, I work at before i work in this company when i was you know like a teenager i was 17 18 i work on a fashion store and i had a you know a very junior a uh, year or two working on the fashion department of this store, but I was very junior. So, you know, I don't have a, a memory, f you know, for this time, but I, I remember some things. Mm -hmm. But I was really, very excited, but I felt that I need to learn more, especially about fitting, mm -hmm. because this is something very important for me, mm -hmm. you know, fitting and and, and, you know, I start to, to knit and get involved. Then there was the first, um, no, I, no, I don't remember. So I start to look online mm -hmm. and, you know, I, f I found classes. I found people with groups. Remember this time where we have groups like Yahoo groups, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I start to have some classes. Um, and I have another amazing teacher, uh, Stephanie Jappel. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, when I found her, she had this website and she was teaching about braiding, about fitting. So I had this amazing, amazing teacher and this, another amazing opportunity. And then there was the very first Vogue Knitting Live. Mm. Yeah, you know, I remember that I was so excited. I said, you know, I have to go, I have to learn, I have to go and see what is, what is this. So I decided to, you know, to go to New York you know, save some money, you know, yeah. staying in a friend's place, all the stuff. Yeah. So I went to Vogue Needing Live. Which is a big leap of faith. Like, that's it's a big trip. It was like a jump. I don't know how to say. I just say, you know, I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. Mm -hmm. So one of the classes that I, that I was, it was a Marilyn Patrick class. Mm -hmm. And this class has a very strong impact on me because uh, on this class, she shared about her creative process, how to submit a pattern, mm -hmm. how she came up with ideas. I'll never forget how generous she was, mm -hmm. you know. For me, she, she's so prolific, so talented, you know. She's have been doing this for ages. Yeah. And, you know, this class was something like, my God, you know, she's, she's offering this knowledge, you know, so graciously and so kindly. So this was another very important thing for me. So from that, I went to, you know, several Vognit classes. And then I start to, you know, going deep and really have classes and study about shaping, because this is the most important thing for me, and about grading too. And of course, I had classes with amazing designers. And I, when I feel that I was ready, it was 2015, I, I started to submit my designs. Of course, you know, between 2011, 2010, and 2015, I self-published, you know, a lot of things. But when I feel that I was ready, that, uh, you know, I, I can, you know, submit a, a work that has quality yeah. you know i started submitting 2015 now, and my it, first design, yeah. it before you started submitting just you talking about your education it really does it parallel at all your your ability to be a student of yoga it just sounds so deliberate and it sounds like you had such incredible teachers like I, and I'm sure, because I know you're teaching, for instance, this weekend, what, what just, to, just to sum up, like, what are some of the qualities of a really incredible teacher? Because I have to say, just listening to you, you're opening my mind up, because oftentimes I look at a class as just a technique, and I think I can learn that on my own. I'm not thinking so much about the person and all that they bring and you have just mentioned these people and that they and that seems to be even more important than maybe like skill x y and z i'm glad it's brothers yes you know for me so now that i'm i'm start you know i start teaching online last year and you know because of that i had the opportunity to to teach in amazing festivals so what i try to share you know with you know people that is on my class of course is the technique but most of all you know how you know we came up how you know um what happens in the mechanical of meeting mm -hmm. that this technique you know came up or happens so if i'm teaching um i don't know um tubular uh bind off and cast on so i i try to show the mechanics you know so my my goal is that you know as a knitter when you are learning a technique you can understand you know how the, the stitch moves the architecture of the stitch or the architecture of that you know fabric so and i i believe i strongly believe that this imprint you know in, in me it was from the previous teachers that i have mm -hmm. and in my nature of sharing things mm -hmm. so i like to give the knowledge so 
not give, I like to pass forward, better saying. So some, somebody taught me something, like everything in life, we manipulate, we create, we do things, and then I'm sharing, you know, so other people can go ahead and flow and have joy. And, you know, I think this is very important. Mm -hmm. and, you know, this is something that I love to do. I must, I must say that. <laughs> I really love to do that. There's sort of a sacred element of it that, you know, that's sort of timeless, I would say. Yeah, that's and... Amazing you know. And knitting is an oral tradition, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. from ancient, ancient times, this is an oral tradition. So of course, maybe you are sitting with a person on your side, like a hundred years ago, and somebody taught you to do it. But the, the nature of this tradition mm -hmm. is the oral, um, mm -hmm. The oral, um, I'm, I'm missing the word, but you know, how we, we share things. Yeah, an oral tradition, so. It's not, and it, it strikes me listening to you, not as like intensely individualistic and ego driven, like look at Paula, she's so amazing. It's more like you are surrounded by you, these, these teachers are kind of behind you in your psyche as you take on a new idea. Oh my God, I, I, it's so amazing how, how you are bringing this, exactly how I feel. I'm very shy about my work. <laughs> and, you know, I must say that social media give me so much anxiety, you know, all those things about followers and, you know, this business. Because um, I think that the most important thing is if, if uh, I will share, if I have something, mm -hmm. you know, interesting, or beautiful to share mm -hmm. because I think this is what we need as you know human beings so if I have something interesting and something that maybe you know can be a good thing for you so I will share yeah. so it's you know I'm, I'm a more shy person I must confess <laughs> and I'm glad that you brought this that I have all these people because I feel exactly this way I'm grateful every single day you know, for any any person that came, you know, to my life and shared a little bit of this or that, meeting related or not. So, <laughs> so did you design for yourself? I mean, since you are shy, you had all this good training and you continue to have it. It seems to be like built into your practice that you're always wanting to learn. But how did it go from, I'm, because all I ever do is maybe tweak something for myself. Do you know what I mean? But it's not yes. like I'm making a pattern for everybody else. How did that happen? I'm much more driven to think what people will enjoy. Mm -hmm. So of course, there's my my tasting on it. But I, you know, I uh, I like to look. Uh, I, I you know I read the news every day, every single day especially politics. <laughs> you know, I like to read what I like and what I hate. So oh, I like for you. I, yeah. So, you know, I like to make like a melting pot. So I, I, for me, it's terrible when we get stuck with one opinion about things. <laughs> so, you know, it's the same way about people. So I like to, you know, to look, to observe. I like to, you know, to see online or fashion shows, but I like to see people walking on the streets. When I go out, you know, in my neighborhood and I'm walking, I like to see people, you know, so why, I, you know, I don't elaborate much like why this person is wearing this. I like to see people. So how we are manifesting, you know, our spirits, mm -hmm. this era, you know, how we are living. So my designs are more driven to other people. So I like to look and see, you know, maybe, you know, this is something that would be cool or nice. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I'm working uh, submitting my work to magazines, we have the inspiration for this edition. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I love too. But I, you know, I must say, Jackie, that I, I love to open myself to, you know, any influences that I can have. So I love art, I love music, mm -hmm. you know, any form of art. So all this for me is like a puzzle. So, you know, I like to be infected. I like to be, you know, 
um, I like, you know, to open myself to what is happening in our world. And then when I'm designing, I think that all of those things came together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is, I think this is, you know, the way that I, I, I need my stuff. Of course, I think about myself, what I would like to wear, you know, in all the details. But I'm driven to think, you know, maybe people will like this, something like that. <laughs> um, it strikes me, I don't mean this about gender, but it strikes me somehow as a feminine way um, to be kind of receptive and to kind of a call and response with your environment. Whereas less of, because there are some designers, it's not a good or bad or different where it seems very much like they have a clear ethos of this is what they do. And you can kind of tell, but I was looking at your items and there are, there's such a range. It's not, yeah. I can't just go, that's a, at least in my, my one month of working. <laughs> But, and I and that often seems like it's supposed to be a really important question, but maybe it isn't. Maybe it, maybe if you're, you're saying you enjoy um, having a design question and just pursuing it. Yes, exactly. So my, you know, maybe if a person needs, um, you know, my, 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 my patterns, my designs, probably they will feel you know my my prints let's put this way on the fitting or you know on the details mm -hmm. but like i said i think it's you know my contribution you know to this segment let's put this way not my contribution like my my expression i think would be more rich if i can be open to you know other you know tendencies or not tendencies but you know trends or things that are happening instead of pursuing just one style let's put this way sure I, something like that so i feel more free i feel freedom i felt as a knitter of your patterns i felt like alert oh this is happening oh i haven't <laughs> done this before this is you know i i felt very engaged while knitting them and it was refreshing so there was definitely um that going on as I as I worked through through them they were really a joy and clear to to knit from <laughs> oh, this is the most important thing for me you know if the you know the knitter has a, a nice experience so you know if there's a, a different construction you know I try to you know write in the directions as much as possible clear as much as possible so the person can have a nice experience mm -hmm. yeah eating this and say oh you know what this is interesting you know kind of fits nice things like that so you know if, if i'm able to do it so my job is done <laughs> so i know i love a lot of people ask about favorites um and i don't know i tend to not i tend to not love that question favorites <laughs> but <laughs> but, but but still, I, I'm going to reframe it and just say, like, what's one of the patterns that you learned a ton, you know, that you learned a lot from that you designed and was a real, you feel like a real moment in your development as a designer? Um, I think um, my, you know, the first design that I submit for Niti.com, it was a sweater. It's a very basic sweater. And there's a detail here on the neckline, and there's a detail here on splitting ends. So, you know, this pattern, I was so, uh, so nervous to submit a, a first design, but at the same time, you know, I, I feel that I need to think about the person that will wear this. So it was, a, you know, a neckline that was a little high, so I was looking for a detail here. So this one, it was important. And, you know, my first design for a magazine, it was a sweater for Pom Pom. Um, and I remember, you know, that I was thinking about a detail exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a it's a terrible photocopy, but there it is. Exactly, so exactly this one. <laughs> 
So this one, you know, it, it has a mechanic to have this detail in the back with short rows. So, you know, I think this was the first time that I feel that I was challenging myself, that I have the responsibility, you know, to make something cool, but, you know, doable. So I think this one is, it was important. <laughs> Tavara, is that how you say it? No. Yes, Tavara. Yes. Okay, <laughs> it's so beautiful. And you worked with pom pom, and then you a verb for keeping warm was the yarn, right? Exactly, exactly. Natural dyed, and oh. I remember. I'm sorry. Oh, it's just a masterpiece. I love how you start off with a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you know my experience. You know, working with magazines with publications, is you know even from when I start in 2015, they were open, you know, to new ideas, to, to you know, new designers. So, you know, people don't know who I am. You know, I was even slower in social media <laughs> than I am today. Mm -hmm. So if you look to my, my Instagram, you'll not see my face. So people don't know, you know, who I was from where I was. Mm -hmm. So, and I feel, you know, something relieving in this process. So, you know, I can submit a work, even being a South American person. So even, you know, not uh, English not being my, you know, mother language. So I, I feel freedom and I feel there was possible to work with people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. you know, even, you know, being a South American person. So yeah, I, I felt that and I still feel that, you know, even more and more. So, you know, all those publications, they open for everybody that wants to apply. Let's put this way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's definitely very international. And you were um, speaking of, you know, you mentioned some of the things that influenced you. I put it on Instagram and people had some questions for you and they were wondering about your design process in terms of um, yarn or silhouette and which came first, that kind of thing. You I know, mean, sometimes one, sometimes the other. So mm -hmm. there's, there, for me, like I, I said to you, Jackie, for me, it's very important to not have roots. Mm -hmm. So of course, like a human being, sometimes I'm, you know, I feel that I'm going to that, you know, same path. So then I try, I try to, you know, shake them up myself to you know go in a different direction mm -hmm. and I, I feel that you know for me um how can i say that you know I, i'm missing the word in english but you know a person that works on a factory mm -hmm. like a worker so i feel that i'm a worker so i need to do the best with the materials that i have you know with whatever i have mm -hmm. so my my designing process you know it's like a melting pot of things Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'm playing with paper and scissors. So I'm trying to see a different construction. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'm swatching like crazy with a specific yarn. Mm -hmm. And of course, with time, we start to have, you know, a feeling. So we know more, a little bit more about, about yarn. You are saying about the linen quill. So this is a, a yarn that I love. It's a, a wonderful fiber. I, I, love, I love, you know, blends of wool. So we have linen. It's a wonderful yarn. So once I have this knowledge, so I feel more secure. Yes. Not secure, but I feel more comfortable, you know, to design something with that, that fiber, with that yarn. Yes. So, you know, yeah, and of course, like I said, you know, I, I try to not, you know, be on the same, the same spot, creating the same things, like variations of the same thing. So I like to, you know, do something different, experiment, things like that. <laughs> um, I love what you're saying. And I, I guess my experience from doing a knitting podcast and a lot of the feedback that we get from people is a lot of people feel insecure about choosing a color or choosing a silhouette that looks good on them. And we get a lot of feedback that people are excited about our choices that we make, but um, 
but I'm listening to what you're saying and thinking to myself that I, I get in ruts with picking the same color all the time or the same silhouette or, a, you know, something that seems like me. And, um, and I, I like the idea of not being so precious about it. <laughs> and, and, just, and I also like what you said. I, I guess what you said about um, where did my brain just go? You mentioned trying new techniques. Oh, you mentioned that you start to feel comfortable over time. You build up this knowledge over time. Um, but for the individual knitter, oftentimes he or she wants to make a garment that looks good on them and fits their lifestyle. But it's kind of cool because as a designer, you have a broader range. You have a broader goal in mind than that. You know, so you do have more choices. In a way, you know, but so would I, when you're knitting just for yourself, are you a little narrower too? Like, or, you know, or do you also take like some risks with your knitting for yourself? When I, when I'm knitting to myself, usually it's something that I did that I, I really like. And often it's something more simple, you know, like, you know, this is a, circular yoke sweater with nothing <laughs> so you know because how can i say that uh, I, I, my, my necessity is you know to others not as mm -hmm. much as for myself mm -hmm. so if there's something that i i need you know that i you know that i feel that you know oh, maybe i want one of this so i then i need to myself but usually you know i'm working so i don't have you know as much time to need something to me <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because i'm a very slow knitter very slow knitter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know i'm always on that lines and you know so it's difficult you know to have something to me i have two precious friends two wonderful friends Patricia Vivacqua and Zaira Paro, so they are wonderful. And sometimes they need to me something that I, I design. <laughs> oh, nice. They are really amazing. So sometimes, you know, I think, oh my God, I, I really like to have this one. So they sometimes they do this oh, amazing. Oh, that's so sweet. I Thank have you. a gift knit on my needles right now, but I'm the absolute worst because I want <laughs> to knit right away. And I don't want to keep it a surprise. <laughs> so I, I suffer the whole time I do gift knits because <laughs> I want to have it immediately. <laughs> um, you know what you're saying that I, and I'm sorry, I talk too much and I always talk too much, but I'm just going to say this idea that's coming to my head as I listen to you. I am not religious, but I read about religion all the time. <laughs> and <laughs> There's, there's the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's an idea, right? And, and I like the idea of triangulated things because whatever it is, I'm using it as a metaphor, the Holy Spirit as a metaphor, is that like there's this unknown, there's this element, there's you, there's the designer, but then there has to be this little piece of magic that, that, that you have room for that little piece of magic. If, if there isn't room for that, it's just sort of like a product. It's just sort of a, a thing, you know? And, and so in my world, you know, I literally chose, I didn't know what to expect, but I chose this knit next because I knit your this and it was yours. And I was like, I want to knit something else by you. It wasn't that I wanted this sweater. It was like, I wanted to knit another one of your designs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then this sweater came to be, which I didn't expect or anticipate, you know, it wasn't a plan. And I love leaving room. And it sounds like that's what happens in your design. This unexpected third piece, if you're not just so trapped in, I expect this, I want this, this is my plan. Is you there know, a you said something that you know, it's very dear for me and very, you know, something that I, I kept myself. So when I was starting, you know, to knit, I was very excited. 
And I, I had a, a meeting, and so I, I just leave my work, but I was doing a transition meeting. And I was with a CEO from a, a US company, cosmetic company. And I remember that I was talking with him, very excited. You know, when we finished the meeting and we are, you know, having a coffee, you know, that small talk. And I was talking, oh my God, I'm so into knitting now, something like that. And he looked to me and he said, oh, I understand. You are doing something with your hands, like meditating. And at the end, you have a tangible object. I got it. So I will never forget that. Mm. So this guy was a CEO from, a, you know, a, a cosmetic company. But he get it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think when we, when we make something, you know, that we're going to wear or, you know, give to others, but there's something there, there's something more, it's personal. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I feel this magic. I will never forget what this guy mentioned to me. Mm -hmm. I never forget. Mm -hmm. And it's something that, you know, I try to... I don't know. I don't know. I don't try. <laughs> it's with it's, it's in me. It's something that I, I treasure. Right. So, you know, I'm so happy that you feel this way. So yeah. I don't know what to say. I'm just very happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, there is this element of, um, of uh, meditation and relationship and, and, and an, an artifact from that time in your life, you know, that... Yes it carries those. So I want to ask you, I just want to make sure I ask you one more question that we got, because I want to honor that people did submit questions and I don't want to. <laughs> uh, they are so sweet. Thank you guys. <laughs> yes. Thank you for submitting questions. <laughs> um, so it's, they were asking lap dog knits. She asked if there was somebody that you could knit with. Dead or alive, somebody that you would like to knit with. <laughs> oh my God. Um, you know, any person or must to be a knitter? <laughs> anybody, anybody that you'd like to sit and knit with. Oh my God. You know, I think I like to knit. You know, first of all, I sit with everybody. You know, I like a big crowd of knitters, you know, on a park or on a store. Sure. You know, doesn't I love this company? I I love you know our crowd. Let's put yes. this way. Yeah. So when I'm saying our crowd, I'm not saying only knitters. I'm saying crocheters, sewers, or people that bakes. So people that find joy, you know, with with the hands, you know, yes. with, with the ability to do something. Yeah. So, yeah. And I must say that there's some art artistry there. So I you know I feel that. Mm -hmm. So when we are you know, knitting something and we choose a different color or a different detail here and there. For me, there's art, there's art. And this is something that we need to survive with some quality, with some grace. Mm -hmm. so I think art, you know, has this spirit. It's more abstract than anything. So it can be music, can be a little dance, mm. can be painting. So, and I think be alive is, is art. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I love that answer. I, I feel you. I love the intimacy between makers, how they come up and touch you and feel your fabric. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and we all are just like bonded immediately. <laughs> so, you, you, you know, you don't know a person, you are on a yarn store and you see a person touching a specific yarn. Sometimes we can we can hand my, ourselves, we will say, what are you going to knit? <laughs> or which yarn are you choosing? What is the pattern? Mm -hmm. So this is so cool. Yes. So, yes. so in daily life, you know, maybe we go to, to the subway or walking on the streets, we don't talk with anybody. So I think, you know, this maker's crowd is amazing. <laughs> so, um, and then somebody else wanted to know about a fiber that, or a yarn, a particular yarn that you've enjoyed recently working with. Oh, you know, the yarn that I love at most is the one that I have. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
and, <laughs> you know, because, you know, sometimes can be something, you know, fancy and a very, you know, amazing fibers and sometimes can be something simple. So yeah. if I have, if it's in my hands, it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. And that sounds like in keeping with you, you want to discover what is this yarn's story? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. where... Go ahead. No, please go ahead, Jack. Well, where can people find you who, you know, this, where are you going to be in the near future? I know you're going to be virtually online this weekend at uh, Vancouver. Is it the Vancouver yeah. City? Okay. And do you have plans coming up to go anywhere? Yeah. I will be in Vancouver Neat City t teaching two classes that I really love. One is a technique that I call embroider, embroider as knit. It's the mm -hmm. technique that I use on um, making magazine sweater. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah, on Asteralis. That's so uh, cool. But really, you know, I love, you know, things that can, you know, embellish our knitting. I love embroidery, but I, you know, I came up with this idea that I can do you know, my embroidery as I need. So when I'm done, mm -hmm. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be teaching this technique that I love. Mm. And I will be teaching a class about tubular cast on and bite off. It's a way that I do, like I, I said to you, you know, it's a way that I do uh, so to free people. So you have to stop when you bring, when you take back your work, you know what we are doing. I will be teaching in Fiber World in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, two classes. Uh, one I created specifically, specifically for this event that is about knitting with linen and cotton. Oh. So we are going to, you know, uh, block a little swatch. We are going to talk about all the characteristics. So I'm very excited about this class. Uh, by the end of the month, I will be knitting on a Brazilian festival, and I will be, there's something special that Making Magazine, now they have a making app they are creating. Oh. So I don't know if I can say, but stay tuned, there will be something special. <laughs> Very neat. Um, may I quick ask, don't yes. answer this, just say yes, there's an answer, but you don't have to answer it now. Tubular cast on. When it's twisted rib, I don't know how to do it. Like I can do it if it's a one by one rib, but if it's a two by two rib, I don't. So is that anything that you will go into in your class? A variation? Yeah. Yes, this particular one, I will teach the one by one, but I will show you how you can adapt for two by two, two by one. So I think oh. this is interesting. Oh, I'll have to sign up one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I have been working a lot, so I have some designs for the end of the year, so I'm very happy and working a lot. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I know you're in every publication. <laughs> it's like, there she is again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm working on a book, Jackie. So I'm very excited. Yeah, oh, that's so happy. congratulations. <laughs> So we have a book next year by the fall. So, oh, you know, I'm so happy for you. I'm a, I already designed all the, the styles, all the, the designs, so everything is ready. So now I'm starting to knit, to write the patterns and knit, mm -hmm. because I write the pattern before. So. Oh, now, do you feel like you're living your dream? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I hope this dream never ends. So I, I think I'm living something cool. <laughs> but I, I don't know how to, you know, it's not I don't know. I'm afraid to, you know, to name it that this is something magical because mm -hmm. everything will fade eventually. Sure. sure. And, and I'm aware that this work, you know, is something that, you know, like everything in life has a expiration date mm -hmm. so and like i said i'm very shy so i feel that i'm working hard mm -hmm. with um with a different light you know yeah. with a different perspective so and i and for me this is a responsibility because i need to keep up with quality i, I need to you know create 
things, you know, different things. I need to, you know, spice it up my work all the time. Yes. You yes. know, to bond with people, to bond with other meters. It's a practice, like like the yoga. It's a practice. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, one of the best things I ever heard about creativity was, I think her name's Elizabeth Gilbert, and she wrote this book called Big Magic. And she said ideas, she thinks of them like the Greeks, that there's just an idea floating out there. And you can say yes to it and let it come into your life, or it'll just keep going and find somebody else to manifest itself with. But that it's not like you have to be a genius, you just have to be open. I totally agree with that. I totally, you know, I, I, I'm, um, I have been studying Tibetan Buddhism since like 1999. Hmm. And I truly believe on it. You know, I truly believe on it. So the, the, you know, it's difficult. It's, we can do this all the time. But I need this as a practice that we kindly, you know, bring it up, you know, together, you know, every day, every time. So open open ourselves mm -hmm. you know it's, of course you know there are things in life that make us hurt or ang angry uh, so and it's okay it's part of the life so I, I need that you know the most important thing is to recycle and open up recycle and open up <laughs> oh, I think this oh that's so hard so i also had my heart broken while i'm <laughs> doing this and <laughs> so i just like so this is my broken heart worrying about my son's sweater. <laughs> and there's something amazing because you made some amazing modifications that I think you brought, you know, your touch, your art to it. So you were feeling, so when you're knitting this, I don't know if, if you, you agree, but, you know, looking, you know, from here, I felt that you, you were having lots of emotions mm -hmm. and, you create something, yeah. So you make art. So your feelings, yes. Yeah. So you know, it, brought you to a different path. Let's put this way. Yes, but that whole like, will something new happen? Will I feel different? Blah blah blah. That is all faith. <laughs> <laughs> it's all faith. I mean, we all have that from time to time. Of we course, all we. Of course, you know, every, every day in the morning, I experience a little anger, <coughs> in, you know, in, for purpose. So I do this because I read all the, you know, like I, I mentioned to you. And I think this is important because it's something that, you know, shake, shake me. Like, you know, I need, to, I need to, you know, get out of this. We, you know, we need to create a different humanity. I don't know. I think it, this is a real feeling. We are we have anger, we have sadness, mm -hmm. we have all all those things we have. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, like a human being, I feel that I, re I have the responsibility to you know deal with this. So and and see that you know I relate with other people. So if I'm on social media, that is not. So I'm not close to a person like skin to skin, but you know we are sharing things with people so I, I think we have this responsibility with the quality of things that we express that we stay mm -hmm. I, I don't know this is my my view so mm -hmm. I think this is a, a life practice that is precious to be intentional yeah and 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 bring something to to the table if this is relevant if it's important and in a way that i you know i will not hurt people but brought people to the conversation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah like that i love it and because uh, we have too much fight already <laughs> to, you know in the world so there's you know things going on and I think we need to find a place of understanding to change. Yeah. And understand that some things will not change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I guess I would say the thing that I love about knitting is that it isn't made up of words. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I love words, but I love that it is a totally different language, you know? 
I totally agree with you, Jack. Beautiful set, beautiful set. Because, you know, talking all the time is limited, mm -hmm. you know. Because when we put in words, we are limiting the experience. So it, this is not a crazy talk. So I like to bring an example. So when you are struggling with a stitch, very simple. So, you know, it's, you're not, it's difficult to memorize or the anovas are not here and there. And then you, you know, finally you get into the flow. So when you, you know, you feel that you know when you are knitting, like, you know, relaxing. So this quality, so how we can describe this? It's impossible. Right. Right. It's personal, it's right. delicate, and it's intense. It's everything. Right. So I think you brought, it's beautiful. So more than words, feeling. It's, it's <laughs> like this stitch pattern, like, for instance, was so slow at first from me, you know, and it took me a while to be able to understand it back and forth and fix it and do whatever and also to accept it that it was slow <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean it was such a journey it was such a journey so um well i want to thank you so much for spending time with me and our viewers and is there just before you go is there anything that like for you comes up a lot that people ask you about that, you know, that you would want to say to encourage them in their knitting practice at, or just something along the way that you've picked up that you feel like really has been a benefit to you. I know you've said a lot of them, but just to, <laughs> um, you know, one thing that I, you know, I think that is important is when I, you know, when we came up with things in knitting, they say, oh my God, this is so hard. So, you know, try to not use this word, <laughs> hard, mm -hmm. you know? So we have, we have, I don't know, a, a secret pleasure to say things are hard. So maybe look and say, oh my God, this is challenging. Mm -hmm. And of course we, we can choose, you know, live at it, you know, live at that. So not going there now, or maybe, you know, we can go and say, you know what? I'm going to, you know, see how this works. So I think what I like to, to share with, you know, with our fellow knitters and fellow makers is something like, you know, let's try, you know, let's try. You know, there's not, there's not you know, a, a super damage and make mistakes. So, right. you know, and it's, it's different. So making mistakes will make us more powerful, more, we have more knowledge. Yeah, I think. <laughs> oh, I love that. Boy, I could talk to you for hours, but I want to make Me sure too. that Zoom doesn't kick us off. Because <laughs> we have the free Zoom here. <laughs> oh, Thank you so much, Jackie. Oh, and such a joy. Please, you know, send a, a kiss, a Brazilian hug to Caitlin. <laughs> I will. Oh, I already miss you. It was just so <laughs> wonderful to get to see, talk to you today. What are you doing to you? Yeah, we have. Congratulations for the anniversary of the podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank it's you. Such a journey, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, how you guys feel about it? So, it's amazing, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I can't get over it. You know, I and the fact that we don't live to together anymore so that but that because of the podcast we can see each other i can't believe it you know <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to new york next week and meet in new york so, oh, this, is, this will yeah. be amazing yeah so i feel very lucky and very blessed and i and again i it's knitting has just been all about relationships and people to me this whole time so i just um so grateful so grateful. Thank you. Well, <laughs> thank you for your time today. And I will, I'll put some, I'll put all the links up to everything we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Jackie. Yes. You know, so I, I wish I have a different word for, from thank you, because it's more than that. So we are here sharing. It's wonderful and it's precious. So I would say thank you, but you know, 
it's more like a, a hug. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Paula. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>